Little guy, can we determine the shape of this weapon? I think so, yes. I'll need some information, though. What can you tell me? Well, it's at least... 20 centimeters. It's shaped like a... a cross shape. Does that help? Yes, thank you. We'll have the results in a moment. I see. This isn't a cutting tool, like a knife. It's like a spike or a spear. So, a stabbing weapon. Hmm. I don't like the looks of this. Right. This isn't your usual murder weapon. Something's not right. What do you think, little guy? You mean the weapon in the shape of the wound, right? That knife isn't long enough to have done that. And it's nowhere close to the right shape. No. Something else has to be the real murder weapon. The second thing this tells us is... I agree. The husband's definitely lying to us about... In any case, we know for sure that the knife isn't the murder weapon. However, we still don't have a clue what the real weapon was, or to who the killer is. Mm, take it easy. We just have to think about all of this. A sharp weapon, like a spear, that can go through a human body. We'll have to find out what it was. Ah, Dr. Kimishima. We're done interrogating Joseph. Joseph? You mean the victim's husband who confessed to the murder? Yes, he just keeps saying that he killed her. We've got nothing to go on. Mm. I'd like to hear the recordings myself anyway. I want to know if the blood on the victim's sleeve was his or not. I've already sent you the data. You can examine it whenever you want. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. I've already told you people. It was a domestic dispute. I was angry at my wife and I stabbed her. That's all there is to it. So what if I'm in a wheelchair? It doesn't mean I can't stab someone. She was standing right in front of me, so I just shanked her right there. I turned myself into the police right after. You know what happened after that. But what about my hand? I injured it. I see. The victim's husband does have an injury on his hand. This will prove that the bloodstains came from the husband. Hmm. True. These pieces of information do share a common bond. The blood on the victim's sleeve is type O. Joseph has a wound on his right hand, and he himself has type O blood. There's little doubt that the blood stains on the sleeve were left by him. That doesn't prove that he killed Alma, though. We'll need more evidence to be certain. Let's keep investigating. This is one bizarre case. There's so much about it that's hard to believe. You don't think the husband did it, Dr. Kimishima? Who knows? Anyway, let's put the facts we know so far in order. The reason why it's doubtful that the victim's husband is the murderer is because... Yes. The knife he says he used could not have caused the wounds she died of. There are other reasons to doubt him too, no matter what weapon he used. Pushing it all the way through a human body would require a lot of strength, but he's... Indeed. He is wheelchair bound and cannot stand under his own strength. Would he be able to kill someone like this while sitting in a wheelchair? His hospital records make it clear that he can't stand up at all. Yes. The shape of the weapon and the details of the death make it unlikely that he's the murderer. Still, he insists that he's the one who killed her. I don't get it. Usually people lie to avoid being blamed for a crime. Huh. You have a lot of experience with lying, Mr. Investigator? Hey, we agreed not to bring up the past, didn't we? <laughs> but why would he want to make himself the criminal? All I can think of is that he's defending somebody else. Either that or covering up an even bigger lie. That doesn't change what I need to do at all. Contact HQ about the inconsistencies we've discovered and interrogate the husband again. I'm going to the crime scene. Understood. I'll get authorization immediately.
This. It's a shard of glass. Supposedly, only Joseph and the responding police officer were at the murder scene. If that's the case, then... Yes, there were no other shards of glass in the area. The police wouldn't be so foolish as to contaminate the crime scene. I'm beginning to wonder if someone there had cleaned up the other shards of glass. I could send this shard to analysis. We might learn something about it. Hmm. There's an inscription on this clock. To my loving father and mother from Abby. Huh. Why does this decoration look familiar? That's right. It's the same as that star-shaped bruise on the victim's head. The murderer could have struck the victim with this clock. I need to take this back and carefully investigate it. Hmm. There are traces of something having been burned in this fireplace. It's something other than firewood. I wonder if there's anything left. Huh, I've got something. What is this? There's something else here, too. Is this fur? What is this doing here? Hey, little guy. Your turn. Yes, what is it? Hmm. There's some kind of compound on the concave surface here. Any details? It's wine. Yep, no mistake. So, there's wine on the inside of this piece of curved glass. That means this shard comes from... That's probably right. Then again some oddballs who drink wine straight from the bottle or something. Perhaps. Let's assume for the moment that it's from a wine glass. A little more investigation may provide us with more information. Hmm. These two hairs appear to be the same. If that's the case, then the hair from the fur was on the victim's clothing. Why, though? Huh. The decoration on the clock matches the victim's head wound, but this couldn't possibly have been the fatal blow. I need to know exactly how this wound would have affected her.